Hello, how's everyone doing today? Uh, yeah, it kind of came out weird, but uh, whatever. Uh, so yeah, mm, uh, basically, where do I start? Right, I mean, in this video, and realistically, what I actually had to bring up was just what man's overall purpose is for their existence inside of this little earth, inside of this world. Uh, and in life itself, I mean, honestly, just to keep it simple, I mean, your whole life is dependent on you just choosing right from wrong. It's your entire person and your entire and your entire character as a whole is a whole bunch of yeses and a whole bunch of noes, a whole bunch of yeses to virtues and practicing good works and good things and a whole bunch of yeses to sins. And a whole bunch of no's that I'm not going to do this good work, or no, I'm not going to do this, or no, I'm not going to sin. And because of that, and based off that alone, all of that has to deal with the ending product. And maybe for some of you, you're just going to realize it. You know, you're going to reflect back on your decisions and on your life, all the mistakes that you actually made, and maybe some things that you couldn't have done to prevent it. Uh, I've been placed in many of those situations before, but uh, obviously there's uh, everyone's required to pay for their lifestyle before they actually ended up getting saved. Uh, Peter was no different, obviously. When you end up reaching that age, your arms will be outstretched and you're going to go somewhere where you don't want to go. So if you do choose to actually be a Christian, automatically that's just your wages. I mean, you're not going to die, but and because you're not going to die, you're obviously going to have to suffer the consequences for your actions, for your rebellion and your disobedience to God himself. Many individuals want to just obviously just deny that entirely uh, and just dismiss that entirely rather. And they just go in favor of their own little philosophies and what they obviously want to hear. Uh, these itching ears and the things that just sound convenient to them. So obviously check yourself. Make sure that you're obviously holding yourself against that type of uh, principle. And that you obviously are hearing the types of messages that you need to hear. And the messages that are obviously going to make you uncomfortable. Not in that way. But obviously that that is obviously going to produce uh definite change is going to produce uh you actually realizing that you need serious help and you need uh to tone it down a little bit with your actions with your lifestyle or you're just your own way of thinking you know obviously it's good you know to be reminded that you know what i don't know at all uh and there's just, just so many other different principles like that uh that also play a role in you finally being able to let go of some of these situations that come inside of everyone's life uh even at the same time that you're going through those situations and it's a lot easier and a lot more you know uh to actually be able to let go of whatever emotions or whatever is actually happening to you in that current moment and really blow past uh the in the moment uh, feeling that you're obviously going through and really think ahead and really think about the consequences that these actions are obviously going to come with. Uh, so yeah, the cumulative yeses and nos. That is your entire life. Your whole purpose on the face of this earth is you basically just saying yes to all the good works and noticing. Uh, I mean, I mean this that was pretty pretty easy i mean you could just look back on your life and just be like man how many times did i say yes to sin and i ended up falling flat on my face how many times did i say yes to crime which is a sin and I automatically fell on my face and i went to jail i mean these things are so easy to be able to reflect on and to actually be able to think and ponder all of your mistakes that you actually have made inside of your life but realistically, you're going to have to let go of those mistakes and just let those be lessons learned. 
uh, and not realistically be in that way of thinking that you're holding on to the past, you're holding on to this guilt, and you're holding on to this shame and embarrassment, when in reality, obviously, everything that has happened to you in your life, all your experiences are meant to edify you, and they're obviously meant to uh, form and develop your eternal character. It's all, it's all meant to benefit you. And so you don't actually fall into the same old sins and the same old traps and the same old situations that you've always fallen into. But everybody's different. Everybody obviously applies themselves a lot differently. So more, most less. And um, and that's just a situation, you know. This is just something that you can't change. You can't change human nature. You can't change what a person obviously wants to do. Rather... Uh, everyone much, would much rather prefer to obviously hear those feel-good messages that God loves you, but in reality, that's not the the, the truth of the situation. Uh, in reality, obviously, God demands, you know, in God's eyes, the fact that you do good things is like, you know, whatever to him is just normal. It's just a part of his character. And so he's going to be more focused on the bad uh, inside of you just so you actually are able to get rid of the gunk and that way it actually produces a healthy character and a healthy character growth and development if you just keep on you know obviously um, exalting yourself like wow I'm so this and I'm so that uh, without you actually addressing any of the situations that Christ himself is able to see in all of the bad Obviously, you're never going to get better. You're just going to continue just living in this way of thinking that, you know what, I have some good qualities about me and some good traits, but then you fall into the same old traps and the same old snares of the devil. And then, obviously, when these situations get so extreme and so bad, you're realistically able to see that, you know what, it's finally time for me to actually be able to let go uh, of these things and finally be able to just break free and you know and it's time to grow up and it's time to do these things sadly many individuals learn this in prison not even in jail or in county that after they get oh sorry that was after they get served so many years and so much time after they actually have so uh, served so much time yeah it's obviously able well to be um understood at that level that you know what I made a lot of mistakes in my life and I don't want to continue making these same types of mistakes. It's time for me to actually live this productive lifestyle. And then these individuals get out and uh, automatically, you know, they're not actually able to live this productive lifestyle and this, you know, just a normal productive member of society type of lifestyle where they actually have a nine to five job. And so they obviously revert uh, to actually selling drugs. I understand that perfectly, you know, I used to sell drugs and things like that uh and realistically you know this easy money and this fast money uh, excuse me and um and honestly that trap in itself if i wasn't a christian i would definitely just be selling drugs just because it is so difficult uh for me to actually be able to have a job for me to actually be not homeless and here i am just doing all these things and trying trying to do these things honestly and uh and it's just so difficult and it's so hard obviously i used to sell drugs when i was like 16 17 18 19 uh and then you know 20 ish a little bit and even throughout all this time obviously you know um it was always a means to actually be able to just get a little bit of a pocket change a little bit of money for me to actually be able to buy some things like i wasn't actually working any of those types of jobs or mcdonald's i just didn't want to work mcdonald's types of jobs just because of the food and i didn't want to constantly eat that food all the time i was scared of getting fat or whatever the case may have been i was scared of gaining too much weight and then next thing you know like, you know whatever and uh and, and yeah i mean and so obviously I was selling drugs. I needed money. My parents were gonna buy me clothes, so I had to obviously either steal these clothes or I actually had to, you know, sell drugs or whatever the case may be. Uh, and yeah, that was my life. And then 16, 17, 18, 19, and then obviously 19. I got at 19 I got saved uh, by Christ, and I finally was able to recognize how real God actually is. That is not just you know if God is real he's not going to care if i smoke a little plant because the universe is so big and he's going to care about these little things he's got other things to actually worry about like other aliens and other life forms on a different planet 
but in reality i was looking at these things from a different from my own point of view and uh, obviously if god was real then of course he's going to care if you actually smoke weed crack whatever uh you do coke you smoke cigarettes you get drunk every day you get drunk every other day and other things like that but and that's just something that i just wasn't able to equate at that age and those times but obviously i understand perfectly these types of individuals when they actually get out it's so hard and it's so difficult nobody wants to hire you because you're a felon and these things just get so frustrating because you actually you absolutely need need that money and honestly i'm just going to tell you like this is those situations are not just going to come you're going to end up homeless and all honesty and that's just something that you need to prepare for and to ensure that you obviously don't go back to your old uh, lifestyle your old way of thinking uh i've been homeless uh this, and you know it's, it's, it's honestly whatever but uh, to for you to just dismiss that fact or that possibility would be uh is completely foolish you're not even preparing yourselves for the what ifs and these types of situations and you're just going into it like ah whatever i you know as long as i don't have to sell drugs i'm, I'm on parole or whatever and honestly it's like really difficult it's so difficult to actually be able to uh to just reject that type of lifestyle altogether when you finally are uh, released from jail or when you finally are uh released from the bonds of sin so to speak obviously through christ's means and through the holy spirit's salvation but it honestly is very difficult it's easy money it's fast money you could get easily like 400 dollars off of whatever and you could just continue just flipping that over and over again and, and it, obviously just saying it like that it's like wow it's like really easy to just sell drugs especially if you actually know people and if you aren't able to actually get a job you know how easy it is to actually be able to and to do that then obviously the temptation is a lot more difficult for you to actually be able to resist uh sadly many individuals go back to those lifestyles and those old lifestyles because it's just so difficult and or some of these individuals are held back like christ like me i already know i already know what it's like to actually be a hundred percent you know out of my own being homeless but that's just something that i have accepted uh every other time christ has definitely provided for me uh in those situations and in those circumstances was uh, i realistically don't care although it's a, a, a very enormous inconvenience for me to continue living this uh type of lifestyle where every individual is just hates you for no reason and so they won't hire you is another topic in itself obviously that's not meant for you to be encouraged to actually let it all go or to actually be able to go back to your old ways and to start selling drugs but obviously it's meant to refine your character to purify you uh and to prune you that way you actually are being uh faithful uh to god as faithful as he's been to you your, your whole prison sentencing and the whole time you're actually in the joint and <laughs> It was honestly, obviously, you had a lot of time in there. I know I was there. I was in jail. I wasn't in prison, but I was in jail. I read the scriptures back to front, and all I had was time is, in short, what I'm trying to say. I don't watch TV, so obviously I wasn't going to watch television. Uh, and obviously all I had was time. I read other books and other things like that because that's realistically all you could do. Uh, and whatever they let me out and i was homeless right away and it, it is what it is everybody gets spiritual we had bible study classes in in well, not prison but in, in county uh, i went to those bible study classes just to get out of well i don't even know just to get out of the room basically kind of ish and and yeah i mean that's basically about it uh and yeah that's what life in prison life in prison life in county is like uh so all you have is time i already know what's wrong with individuals that aren't actually able to read the scriptures back to front who actually want to do them they're just so distracted by everything in this earth but if they actually place these types of people who actually want to read the scriptures in an environment where they're forced to have nothing but free time on their hands you can't even watch television because people are obviously 
uh, casting votes, what show you actually want to watch, and next thing you know, everybody watches a show they just don't want to watch. So obviously you go back to yourself, all you have is nothing but time, and so you read the scriptures. Back to front, you either draw, you procrastinate, you put that off, and you read another book. And so you, you're left with no option but to get closer to God in jail for some and then even for others they still won't even bother picking up the bible and because of just how individuals actually are they prefer to do other things and that's sadly some christians and not allowing to see some of these christians even if they were to be placed in jail they still would not even bother uh reading the scriptures even though how badly they have this urgent desire to on the outside uh but finally being inside is nothing changed but yeah so uh this, so obviously this video isn't meant to actually be just about that solely. Uh, it's obviously meant to be about your yeses and your noes. I was just using that example because it's just the easiest one. Everybody's actually able to see that. Whether you've actually been to jail or whether you haven't been to jail, that your life is one big yes and one big no. Either the yeses to sins and the yeses to, to, to crime or the noes to crime so you don't go to jail, right? Uh, or the yes is to good virtues and the yes is to the practices of Christ. Uh, no matter how tempting it may be to actually uh, waver or to fall back uh, from your servant role uh, in following Christ. As well as just overall, you know, many individuals aren't actually aware of why they're here on earth. The only reason why you're actually here on earth is to obviously choose the right uh, and not the wrong. If God obviously wanted it his way, in his own little way, I'm sure he would obviously always choose everybody to choose the right and not the wrong. But because individuals obviously have their own free will, they want to do whatever they want, they obviously choose the wrong. They get, you know, they obviously get rebuked by God for their iniquities and their sins. And then they start asking these types of questions like, what is the purpose for my life and why am I actually here? uh realistically i mean that's essentially it you made some mistakes and it is obviously leading you to this point of forced reflection where you're obviously forced to reflect on your past decisions on your past mistakes on your past faith to refine you to obviously help you to be able to choose the right path in the good way always and consistently just how god obviously always and consistently chose to not throw you into hell and it led to the point that you're actually able to hear this message but still many individuals just dismiss that entirely and they're just like well i don't have a ferrari yet so i don't think i'm going to actually choose to accept this message as truth i mean obviously these individuals think very carnally whether you actually are saying it from a good heart or a good place or you know a good spirit uh but obviously these individuals is don't realistically care they're still 100 percent carnal all they want is they're all about them themselves it's always them 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 and they're so self-centered and so selfish they're so addicted to obviously you know this is a reward system for the devils and the demons themselves they're so addicted to people praising them for their obviously uh but how many highlighted scriptures they have in their scriptures uh is how many uh what color they use for what verse and what verses they use for which colors and what color they use for wisdom and what color they use for psalms and and other things like that oh i prayed for more than five seconds yesterday and everybody's just cheering them on i mean well yeah it's good but obviously christ himself already knows that you know that it's time for you to knock it off and it's time for you to actually pray for more than an hour but you individual these individuals obviously set this bar so low and they set the standards so low that that in itself is praiseworthy to actually pray 15 seconds uh these individuals are 100 percent well i mean i'm gonna say it is they're definitely 98 percent flesh and about two percent spirit and these individuals just go off because of this what's the word uh, because they actually finally read the scriptures after like six months you know they just pat themselves on the back and they ha have this self-satisfaction that's through the roof and nothing ever changes with them and they just continue going through the same exact cycles that's lukewarm i know you want to believe that christ is going to let you do these things at your own pace because he knows you he knows your heart and he understands you but realistically you're frustrating uh the grace of god and you need to start moving at christ's pace immediately 
or I don't bother. Don't bother doing those things at your own pace from now on. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, but grace and peace be multiplied to you. Uh, the graces to know what I'm saying is true. The peace to know that is actually sent from God. And the mercy is to actually be able to receive these types of messages. And to actually be able to receive the, the message at the right time. And the love of the Lord Jesus Christ reign inside of your hearts. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Because you need them both in your hearts and with everyone. All right, so the yeses and the noes. So basically, I understood this on a deeper level. You know, that every single mistake that I obviously have made inside of my life, I could have easily have said no. My life would have been 10 times different, and I would not be in the situation that I am right now. Had I said yes, I obviously choosing the right path in the good way of when I was on probation, when I was in high school. Uh, and... Obviously, I would have graduated, I would have gotten my diploma, I would not have been this high school dropout, uh, and I would not have gone to rehab, right? But what did I end up doing? I ended up smoking weed, I ended up uh, failing and bombing my drug test every single time to the point that these individuals obviously were forced to actually put me in inpatient uh, rehab for uh, just a month before I was actually able to take my finals. And because of that, I obviously had to repeat, well, I was going to repeat it either way, but still... I didn't go to school whatsoever, in case you don't know. Uh, but yeah. Um, and I was forced to obviously repeat. And I was I went to rehab for like three months. And it was May, June, July. And by July, I was actually out. And I was actually, you know, I was just like, well, I'm glad I'm finally out, you know glad i finally get to be able to hang out with my friends and this you know it was the senior summer so obviously you know, everybody was like trying to do a lot of things because it was the last summer together-ish i guess some people went to college i don't know my friends were still over here in, in the little town i lived in so i was just excited to actually be able to hang out as a senior uh graduated quote unquote uh, and to be with all of my friends in that summer that didn't happen. Obviously, I went to rehab. God had different plans. And so, obviously, if I had said yes to those types of situations that came inside of my life or another situation where I obviously fled from the cops that landed me in jail, I would not be in the situations that I'm in right now. It's hard for you to get a job when you actually have a felony, in case you didn't know. I mean, individuals just paint this pretty picture for you that, oh, man, this, the, the, you know, the unemployment rate has never been this, this low and... Anybody can get a job in these times, but people are really selective, uh, and they're not as they're not felony friendly, especially if you have a violent crime, which I do have a violent crime. And depending on the type of job that you actually want, you know they won't even bother hiring you if you got caught with robbery or a theft. They're not gonna bother hiring you for those types of jobs where you obviously need to be responsible, and you need to you know they put you in charge of something that. You, is worth a lot of money for violent crimes they're not going to hire you because of the potential threat of you actually getting into a, a physical altercation with somebody uh, at the job and it's just going to lead into a lawsuit in all honesty because if you end up fighting someone else or the person that you hired who has a, a violent crime on his history and on his record ends up getting into it with somebody else there Obviously, the other individual who actually ended up fighting the the violent uh, person uh, is, can can sue the company for hiring that violent individual and can sue the other individual for whatever damages they actually have done. So hopefully you're able to see why uh, they can't do those types of things. It's obviously just to be able to protect themselves from lawsuits. And uh, and that's essentially it. So, uh, so it just gets so difficult for those types of jobs, and and for jobs to actually be able to hire you. And obviously, not everywhere is going to hire you at the drop of a hat. I know the unemployment is actually whatever is low right now. Uh, but these types of individuals are still going through the same old situations. Uh, as always, I've been through it. I tell my parents all the time that it's so difficult for me to actually be able to get um, 
a job and they just find it so hard to believe that um that you know that i can't get a job it's just like why don't you get a job why aren't you actually able to get a job and i tell them the situation that because of my felony and they're just like well uh oh man this is insane it's like i don't believe you you're late you're this you're that and whatever else but uh but yeah so your life is just a cumulative guesses and accumulative knows uh, and sadly, this applies to the, the Christian lifestyle and how they actually live their lives. This is the whole purpose why I actually made this video. Although these carnal and the secular uh, types of situations that come inside of individuals' lives are able to teach you how, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to deal with those types of situations whatsoever. It's best to avoid it. And to just obey the law, right? But obviously what I'm referring to is to obey the law of God himself. There's so many yeses that you said to sin and so many no's that you said to doing good works. Just based off your theology alone and instead of you obviously not keeping these things simple as you should have been, what you should actually have been doing good works to ensure that you actually were uh, doing the will of God and obviously benefiting yourselves. But in God's eyes, there's just been so many different types of situations where you obviously chose to actually sin. And because you chose to sin, you obviously frustrated the grace of God. He rebuked you for it. You went right on your way. And even now to this day, you don't even recognize uh, the immensity of of of, um, of your actions and what you truly have caused and what you truly have done to your life. I mean, honestly, it's realistically really sad that it does get to those that point into those uh, types of situations and, and issues inside of your life to the point that you actually are able to receive grace when you actually are hearing these types of messages to the point that you're not actually able to fight back when the devil is obviously you know hammering you down just because of of theology issues or you're just in fear because God obviously rebuked you for your iniquity and for your sin, so now he obviously doesn't even want to use you anymore, and he's doing everything that he possibly can to ensure that either you, A, uh, completely destroy yourself, or B, you obviously choose to praise God and you choose to bless God, and you're still continuing, uh, you still continue, obviously, to blow past this fear uh, and to just obviously do something that is just, you know, common sense, uh, stuff and nobody has to realistically tell you to fight for these types of individuals for the innocent for the weak uh, or anybody else but through your own fear and through your own way of thinking and excuse making and justifications you obviously chose to back out from those types of jobs and those types of commandments that Christ himself has given you obviously we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against rulers principalities and demons it, it isn't we wrestle not we obviously you are obviously, well, you are obviously meant to fight day in and day out, 24-7, 365, um, against demonic principalities. That is just your Christian duty. If you want to call yourself a Christian, you know, uh, that's just a part of the, uh, what's the word? the job description that's that's essentially it if you refuse to see it like that because of your own way of thinking or because you're scared i know it's scary to actually be able to hear these types of stories of individuals who ended up falling on their face or they end up dying but realistically you're gonna have to blow past this loving your life type of philosophy that you're living and just love christ more than your life and choose to actually engage in spiritual warfare uh and everything else as spiritual warfare in itself is obviously meant to amplify your discipleship with christ your relationship with christ i'll say just because everybody's able to understand that to an extent because a lot of people just regurgitate it and deliverance in itself is obviously going to be the means for you to actually be able to grow and to be able to bond with jesus christ truly as many of you individuals is and you seriously need to let go of the naive spirit are dealing with a familiar spirit. You think you actually are talking to Jesus Christ, but in reality, you're not talking to Jesus at all. You're actually talking to a delusional or a delusion spiritual Christ. And because of that, you think that Christ is approving you, even though there's an all-out war going over your head. Christ has approved of you. And, you know, you this these types of things couldn't be any further from the truth. But in reality, obviously, Christ is mad at you. 
Christ obviously wants you to hurry up and to stop doing these things at your pace. That is a sin. And uh, he wants you to start doing these things at his own pace instead of your own pace. It's a sin 100%. I know you don't want to view it like that, but realistically, it's what it is. And you really, you really need to detach yourself from just the common sins that you obviously are aware of and you have a knowledge of. And really start viewing these things as according to how Christ actually views these things. Anything and everything that is not according to his liking and how he actually wants these things done is automatically a sin. There's no way around it. And there's no easy way to obviously sugarcoat these types of things. I mean, you can reflect on your life on how many types of activities, how many actions you do on a daily basis that is all revol revolved around how you obviously are accustomed to doing these things, which you're comfortable with. But in reality, you're not doing these types of things according to Christ's liking. Uh, I obviously keep it simple. You know, if Christ, with cooking and other things like that, sometimes he won't even let you eat. Uh, he will obviously will tell you to, no, I don't want you to eat right now. I need you to make a video. Or no, I don't want you to do this right now. I need you to pray really fast. And, and sadly, many Christians don't even have that type of integrity or that type of virtue inside of their vessel for them to actually be able to say, you know, what? obviously this is scary in itself if I choose to disobey this commandment. Uh, if it is in Christ or and or it's, for me to dismiss that as if it is in Christ, the consequences would be severe if I chose to not actually pray. And besides, it's a good work. And because it's a good work, obviously, it's Christ. But so many many individuals do not have those types of ears to be able to hear those types of things. And so they blow past these little, don't eat right now, I need you to pray. And then they fall flat on their face. And next thing you know, they fall into these types of situations and they look back and they're like, okay, it was Christ 100%. He was trying to prevent this from actually happening. And or, you know, these these individuals may not even have good spirits about it. They may completely lash out, completely forget about the voice entirely and be like, Christ, why did you let this happen to me? How could you do this to me? And like, I thought you loved me. You know, my pastor tells me, tells me these types of things, that all the promises are true and I believe them. And yet here you are just completely backstabbing me and betraying me. How could you do these types of things? Obviously, you got yourself in that mess. You obviously need to sharpen your discernment to be able to tell what voice is from God and what voice is from Christ. And to stop realistically justifying yourself so much. Uh, it's sad, but that's just the fact of the matter and the situation at hand. Uh, but all of these tools in themselves, once you actually have developed that good and healthy habit for you to actually be able to uh, blow past those types of warnings of don't eat, I need you to pray really fast right now. And then next thing you know, you actually are able to see the results of you actually yielding to those types of things. You actually submitting to, you know, obviously that good work in itself uh, for it to actually be able to teach you that you know what it actually is, Christ, and to actually be able to gain that level of discernment in the future. I know uh, at first I wasn't able to actually be able to hear those types of things, but, you know, me being the scaredy cat of Christ I am, I obviously chose to, to listen either way. I was 100% scared of Christ. I didn't want to play or waver or play these types of games with Christ, whether it was Christ or whether it wasn't Christ. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to choose to avoid the consequences entirely. If it is Christ, oh, I'm just going to yield and I'm just going to fold. And that's it. And so I obviously got to the point where I actually am able to discern Christ definitely 10 times better than these Christians or in these churches. To the point that I obviously am able to know and discern that anything that Christ himself or anything that I hear that is just naturally good and naturally praiseworthy and naturally virtuous and naturally whatever automatically comes from Christ. Some of these situations, 100%, you know, he does these things sneakily. Uh, he'll be like, yeah, well, you know, he'll just keep putting it off. He'll keep putting off eating and putting off eating through other types of things by distractions. And then finally, I'm actually able to see why he was actually putting all of these things off. Other times, he'll just completely say, stop. Uh and just pray really fast and obviously that's fine that's perfectly fine but really it gets overwhelming at first i know you actually want to try it and you actually are you know you're motivated to actually be encouraged to continue living it and to actually practice those things out but 100 percent is is extremely overwhelming and it's extremely difficult there's been so many times where i, f I fell flat on my face 
uh, when I obviously should have yielded and I should have submitted to the actual voice I heard in my head. And obviously I still repeat those same mistakes in different types of forms and in different manners. But obviously those types of things are not perfected whatsoever. Uh, it's got me to the point where I actually am cautious and I have to make sure that it's actually from the Holy Spirit or it's actually from Jesus Christ. But still, even right now, to the point after like two, three, four years that I actually have been putting this to practice, it still has not been perfected and it's still pretty difficult to actually be able to discern. And that's just coming from a person that is actually able to know, that's actually able to tell you uh, these types of things themselves. I mean, you may even be better than how I am and maybe better than how I do these things. You may be excelling in those types of things right away, but these things 100% get difficult. Uh, I'm not trying to obviously remove the attention or prioritize uh, that message in itself. It's still 100% about the yeses and the noes that you need to be checking yourselves with. Keeping these things simple with evil, when you actually are living out these types of lifestyles going on about your daily life, running errands or whatever. Uh, because obviously these things come a lot sneakily. They don't come to you as as obvious and as blatant as fornication or as obvious and as blatant as lying obviously they 100 percent come to you in a sneaky manner uh maybe it's a different form of gossip or maybe it's like a different form of uh of lying or maybe it's over exaggerating or it's exaggerating or maybe it's overreacting or being dramatic or being hasty and impulsive these things 100 percent are sins and 100 percent you need deliverance from you being actually uh being able to stop thinking in your own way of thinking and realistically really um, accept the fact that your own way of thinking is just damning you. You're filling yourselves up with curses. You're filling yourselves up with demons. You're filling yourselves up with practices of iniquities and, and being a worker of iniquity. And so you're never getting better. And, and although you have this knowledge uh, of the scriptures and this knowledge of the gospel itself, the Holy Spirit 100% has left you and you actually aren't able to discern that the Holy Spirit has left you because of this knowledge that you still have and you still have retained, sadly. So there's a lot of individuals in the body of Christ that still uh, live through those types of philosophies. They go and live in their life that because they're still knowledgeable of the things they learned while the Holy Spirit was with them, that the Holy Spirit is still with them. And in reality, these individuals are still not actually able to get over that hump in the road to be able to start seeing the sins and start seeing these sins the way that God sees those things and they just go right back and they backslide and they, they choose not to actually take a, a, a foot forward uh, into that type of light into that type of uh, extreme because obviously it's overwhelming nobody realistically wants to get into that type of meticulousness uh, and to be able to actually be able to see all of their lifestyle uh, and all of their and all of the sins inside of their lifestyles, uh, it's, they're hundred percent naked, and because of that, they feel so ashamed and they feel so clothed. The first thing they obviously are going to revert to is just the natural things that come to them, the first things that they automatically have learned, and the first things that they actually are able to cope with some of these uh, situations. They're obviously going to uh, is this fight or flight. They're not going to flight. They're not going to fight. They're hundred percent going to flight, especially if they're not actually aware of that response in itself. When they actually are uh, hearing these types of messages, these individuals one hundred percent are going to, uh, to, to, you know, to obviously f to go and to run away from facing uh, these situations like a man, or you know, facing these situations. Uh, like God obviously wants you to face these things uh, so it's going to hold them back 100% and uh, and that's sadly uh, why many Christians why many individuals is never continue obviously moving forward at all whatsoever they just continue repeating the same old lifestyle the same old cycle over and over again i go to church i worship god i cry i go back home i feel empty and depleted i eat chick-fil-a i feel better i take a nap i do this i do that i highlight a couple scriptures here and there i fall back into sin how come i'm not actually able to realize how there's no alternative to any of the commandments of christ they ask themselves these questions 
Am I still saved? Am I still this? Obviously, now they're obviously, they're going through the oppression at that point. Uh, Christ is obviously checking their hearts to ensure that they obviously don't waver or they fall back into the ways of the earth or the ways of the world. Uh, he's testing them and refining them to ensure that these individuals are always choosing Christ regardless of the situations, regard, regardless of the results that they actually see. And... Uh, but still, they obviously choose to reject that, and they choose to just walk away from the faith 100%. Uh, this, I don't see how many situations have you even fallen into by the time that you're however old that you actually are. There's been so many situations that you wanted to walk away from God, and obviously you didn't. Or maybe there's been so many situations where you actually wanted to uh, to do the right thing, but you actually ended up not doing it. Uh, there's been so many situations where you didn't want to sin, but you actually ended up sinning either way. It's the same exact principle, but it's, all of it is in a different form is what I actually am trying to explain to you. There's just so many types of different situations inside of your lives that come in so many different types of forms. It's the same old story in the same old situation in a new form, in a, in a new manner. And sadly, many of you individuals aren't actually able to pick up on that. And many of you individuals are not actually able to discern these types of situations and th those types of lifestyles. It's 100% sad that you continue just repeating these same old mistakes for something that you already have been delivered from. And so you're wondering, you're scratching your head, why? Uh, you're not actually able to be better while well, you're not actually able to be uh, this super Christian and, and this disciple of Christ when in reality you're just repeating the same old uh, the same old patterns you've always the same old mistakes that you always have been making uh, and that's just your little curse it's just your little hex that's your little thorn in the flesh that you could obviously get rid of uh, and but it's just it just gets so difficult and so meticulous for many individuals for them to actually be able to see with the naked eye uh, that they just completely negate it they completely just move on and they just blow past it and without actually being able to put two and two together to finally be able to recognize and see you know who's really at fault why the situation is the way that it is the way that it is and what are the means to actually be able to get better from those types of situations honestly in those types of situations it realistically just takes a renewing of mind and a hundred percent it takes you finally you know building the courage and being bold to be able to let go and detach yourselves from your old way of thinking uh and the old manner that you obviously have received in the past to be actually be able to let go of the spiritual milk and finally be able to accept the spiritual meat and sadly many individuals are still not even willing to actually be able to take and move forward into that type of uh into that type of virtue they just continue doing all of these things with the same old spiritual milk uh, spirit and the same old spiritual milk identity even though these, and understanding when in reality these individuals know a lot better. But, uh, but yeah, all these situations that come inside of their lives is the same old story in a different form. It's the same old tale, it's the same old whatever. And uh, and these individuals aren't actually able to discern that. So while, yes, they finally were able to be delivered from some of these sins that they had the knowledge of, like fornication or, you know, other things that I realistically don't want to mention, you know, they realistically are still suffering and they're in the same manner, in the same form as the bondage as when they were obviously committing some of those sins, some of those blatant and obvious sins that... Uh, that now they're actually able to look back and they're actually able to see, you know what, yeah, that was definitely a sin. But they're still not actually able to equate that. They're not actually able to apply that to some of the situations and some of the lifestyles that obviously are living, like spiritual warfare and not engaging in spiritual warfare. Once they actually engage in spiritual warfare, they stay consistent. They obviously stay holy, purified, disciplined, uh, you know, not taking chances, playing this safe. Uh, then obviously they're finally able to to look back inside of their lifestyle when they actually didn't fight and when they actually, you know, heard these types of messages and they completely rejected it to the point they're actually able to be like, you know what, yeah, I was living in sin in those days. But sadly, they never reached those types of points and that's just in that form. There's obviously many different types of forms. The other form is not obviously viewing all of commandments of Christ as it being no absolute 
no alternative and absolutely no alternative to any or any deviation from Christ's commandments just because of this how life has always been and individuals just build this enormous idol of the devil and because of the devil's existence in itself they automatically give the illusion of choice uh that much power when in reality you need to dismiss that being in that entity completely you need to act 100 percent as if the devil doesn't even exist right now or the devil never re uh re rebelled away from god uh whatsoever uh sadly but many individuals, just because the devil isn't thrown in the lake of fire right now, that's the only reason why they're not actually able to live that type of lifestyle out of being able to recognize and see that there's just no alternative to any of Christ's commandments and any of Christ's and God's will. Uh, and and they just, obviously the devil in itself has already built this stronghold inside of this individual's this mind. Uh, to reject that type of lifestyle completely and that way of thinking completely when it comes to actually you uh, obeying Christ's commandments. And so this obviously is able to give these devils to come inside of your life an enormous foothold. And obviously the temptation comes, that thought comes inside of your head that because obviously you're walking here on the face of this earth and the devil is this and the devil is that, you obviously take the bait and you fall into sin, sadly. When in reality, things would have been 100% differently if you would have accepted, you know, that if the devil never would have fallen away from, from you know, from grace, you never would have fallen from grace, there would be no alternative. It's me, myself, and I who is 100% rebellious with or without the devil's fall and and that's essentially it sadly and and people still aren't actually able to accept that they want to give the devil all this authority and all this power and all this they obviously want to blame him for all of their problems when in reality the only the, the fact of the matter in the reality of the situation itself is that the devil came inside of your life he tempted you and you ended up falling into sin you weren't actually able to hearken to the message of you actually being a new creation in christ your identity is in Christ, and because of that, you're, the old has gone away, and the new has come. And so because of that, 100% the old is completely dead. That, that isn't you anymore. It doesn't even exist because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. So you're obviously only listening to thoughts at that point when you obviously hear anything that deviates from Christ's commandments. And you're being tempted because that's essentially what it is. The individuals who haven't accepted that type of message or even who actually know that this message is actually true but it's just too much work for them or whatever excuse they actually want to use, they even know that to an extent that that in itself is actually true. That they're being tempted, they take the bait, but it's obviously whatever to them. They're not saved, they don't do this. But you aren't actually able to realize that. You have these things in such a legalistic manner, and you're in this enormous and this heavy legalistic bond uh, that you're not actually able to realize uh, how easy it is for you to actually be able to let it go and for you to actually be able to recognize how much suffers you realistically causing inside of your life just by that own way of thinking uh that it's all me it's none of these devils are tempting me none of these devils are coming inside of my life i'm thinking all of my thoughts there's no possible way that these devils are whispering these thoughts it's me 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 and nobody else and that's realistically the type of life that you obviously are living sadly and still, you know, you don't want to accept those types of messages. You're just like, well, whatever. You know, I, I'm I'm a new creation in Christ, and yet you still 100% uh, believe that wholeheartedly. That it's all you, you, you. These devils never come inside of your life to tempt you. These devils never come inside of your life to whisper these thoughts inside of your ears. And because of that, you obviously take the bait. And you take the bait 100%. The red flag goes up for Christ and for God. It's iniquity. It becomes a heart issue. And you weren't actually able to dismiss that thought 100% uh, for you to actually be able to blow past uh, the temptation and choose and choose Christ. Submit yourself to God and just resist the devil. These things do not change, sadly. Whatever sin it actually is or whatever feeling or whatever thought that you actually hear that is according to sin automatically that little red flag should go should go up inside of your head that you actually are being tempted there's a devil coming inside of your life right next to you that's whispering that thought inside of your head immediately that's automatically what your uh your mind needs to uh 
needs to go to it right away in all its various forms i know it's going to be hard at first but the fact that you actually have accepted that as truth is good in itself the devil wasn't actually able to whisper anything inside of your ear that was contrary to what i just said uh to be able to confess uh that i was wrong on your end but but still, many individuals will just realize that it's just way too hard. But realistically, it's just overwhelming because you're barely getting into it. It's, it's not difficult. You just need to be committed to that type of lifestyle. You need 100% need to just be able to recognize that everything as a Christian in itself is a process. None of these things are quick fix. Although, I mean, it sounds nice. It would be nice if they were quick fix. But in reality, that's just not the fact of the matter. And that's just the situation uh, i mean there's so many accounts so many different types of scriptures that point to that uh in itself for you to actually be able to see that 100 percent being a christian is is a process the easiest way for me to actually be able to expose that is pick up your cross deny yourselves and follow christ all of your lives until you actually end up dying you have to deny yourself your all of your life that is an enormous process and that is a process in itself of refinement of pruning but still even that uh is pretty lazy in itself now that you actually have received a little bit more knowledge now you actually are able to um to see all these situations and all of these types of scenarios and fires that come inside of your life are meant to obviously benefit you. All of these things are meant to obviously prune you, to be able to perfect your character and to be able to grow you uh, and to develop your eternal character. But uh, still uh, denying yourselves and picking up your cross, many individuals just put it in a legalistic manner where they're just like, well, you know what? You know, I'm, I have to deny myself. These thoughts that I'm hearing are actually my own. And because of that, obviously, I'm this wretched sinner and I'm the worst of, uh, and I'm the worst of the worst when in reality, obviously, what's actually happening. You're being tempted in the same manner as Christ was being tempted uh, in the wilderness. Because you obviously have uh, the scriptures, the accounts, and even all these other types of you know verses and, and scriptures themselves to be able to get you to this understanding that you're being tempted in the same exact manner as Christ, you should be able to r realistically let that type of understanding go and that type of knowledge go and realistically be able to accept uh, the fact that mm, that is true. Uh, to deny yourself, to pick up your cross and follow after Christ in itself, that in itself 100% is obviously meant to uh, to set the foundation up for you to actually be able to see what is actually happening uh, on the face of this earth. And instead of you just continuing to just be blaming yourself, I mean, yeah, some of these things are just already inside of you just because of the iniquities of the fathers, the sins of the fathers, generational curses, ancestral curses. These things are 100% are inherited. You have these things in your sin, in, in your genes. If you inherited death, you obviously inherited all these other sins. Death is physical. All these other sins are physical themselves. Anything that is contrary to your heavenly image, your life, uh, and your behavior, automatically these things have to deal with iniquities sins and devils in the in the demonic so uh, excuse me so uh, yeah sadly that's just the reality that's just the fact of the matter uh but still when the, by the time that you actually have accepted that you are a new creation in christ you're actually able to blow past some of these thoughts and some of these old hindrances that obviously affect the baby christian the carnal christian the lukewarm christian and you actually are able to let go of that type of philosophy uh and that leaven in itself uh, because that's essentially what it is you don't have that type of understanding anymore that oh i have to deny myself pick up my cross and follow christ well yeah obviously that's just a commandment in itself but now you're actually able to recognize and see why Christ said those types of things. Why you actually uh, need to deny these temptations 100% and still be 100% faithful to Christ himself while you continue walking here on the face of this earth. I mean, I make it sound easy that, oh, I'm just being tempted inside of my life. This whole time I thought it was me and I was just this wretched little sinner and I was going to go to hell because of the iniquities inside of my heart. 
Well, if you fell for those types of temptations, 100%, you were going to go into the lake of fire just off that iniquity alone. You had no intentions of getting better. Or another reason for you to actually uh, go into the lake of fire. You don't even want to see those types of things. As sins, 100%, you were going to go into the lake of fire. These three things are what is going to damn and what is going to be the main reasons for all of these Christians in the lake of fire in the future is his downfall. That's the whole reason and the whole purpose for why they actually ended up falling into uh, into sin and, and going into perdition. Because of that type of mindset, because of that type of outlook. So, if you actually take the bait, all these temptations, then yeah, that definitely applies to you to deny yourselves, to pick up your cross and follow Christ. But if you actually are able to deny these temptations and still pick up your cross and follow after Christ, uh, obviously that more or less applies to the types of fires and the types of trials that come inside of your life. That's going to benefit you a lot in all honesty. Christ himself, he suffered like a homeless man, I believe, what did they say in the scriptures? What did he say? He said, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but where does the son of man have to lay? Obviously, that sounds like he was implying that he was homeless. And, uh, I mean, as sad as that actually is, some of, the situation, some of the situations that come inside of your life, no matter how many times you have or haven't sinned, evidently, some of these things are just going to be way beyond your control. Christ never sinned. Christ never did this and he never did that. But he still had to suffer in those same types of manners that he obviously suffered. People were trying to kill him. And these things are just uh, way beyond his control, sadly. You're going to have to suffer in the same exact manner. And that's obviously when where that comes to play. And to pick up your cross and follow Christ and just endure the types of hardships that Christ obviously had to endure as a perfect man and as a man who obviously was a man after God's own heart. Correct? Correct. I don't think he would have been able to be perfect without it. And, or whatever, you know, I don't know anything. Um, so, yeah, I pray that any curses and hexes are broken. That we actually are able to let go of these things. Uh, and that we are actually able to cast them out. And I pray that you are actually able to receive these graces of virtues. Uh, and blessings and gifts and more. By the legion. So yeah, obviously now you are actually able to understand further. Why denying yourselves. Uh, it's, it's just mainly for the individual who ends up taking the bait and falling for these temptations. That's definitely you that you need to do. You need to deny yourself immediately. But if you actually are able to finally recognize what is happening in the spirit realm, uh, in the spiritual uh, sense, I obviously they like to say it's spiritual because they're mocking the spirit of God. They're mocking what is actually spirit, which is the fruit of the Holy Ghost, love, joy, peace, and all these other types of things. While, yes, demons are spirit, the flesh is weak. They operate under demonic flesh uh, instead of, you know, the spirit of God. But anyway, if you actually are able to blow past that, you actually are able to recognize and see that these things that come inside of your life are just temptations. Uh... It makes these things a lot easier for you to actually be able to reject when they finally come inside of your life. Because that seems to be one of the biggest strongholds inside of many Christians' lives is that these temptations, these demonic temptations come from demons themselves. Automatically, these Christians and these baby Christians and naive Christians attribute it to themselves when in reality they need to reject these types of things uh, 100% in the same manner as they will reject uh, something that they obviously don't like, right? But sadly, that stronghold in itself has embedded itself deeply, has taken root inside of the Christian's mind that when these types of you know trials and temptations come inside of their lives, it makes them so hard for them to actually be able to accept that there's just no alternative to any of Christ's commandments. They're not actually able to judge any of the situations 
uh, perfectly in according to what actually is happening. And based off of that alone, they obviously end up taking the bait of the devil that came inside of their life. They came inside of their life, obviously, because they're attracted to that individual's way of thinking and they know that they're actually able to puppeteer this person however they want. They're able to manipulate this person however they possibly want just because they obviously believe that uh, wholeheartedly and they believe that to the fullest that they're not being tempted. Everything bad that comes inside of their life automatically has to deal with them. And sadly, these individuals just take the bait like nothing and they're just like, why is my problem like this? I'm just this enormous mess. I've been there to an extent, but still, I even, you know, I had that type of foreknowledge that, you know, I'm being tempted uh, and this and that. I was obviously, I, I was in a place where I obviously recognized that I was living in so, in so much oppression and so, so much sin. But in reality, I was obviously just being tempted and I needed to fight. Sadly. So if I've been there before, well, to an extent, you know, uh, because of God's grace, um, you get out of it. It's the same exact reason why every single person who is secular, who lives in the secular life, who lives in the secular world, who isn't saved, obviously continues living these types of lifestyles, committing these same types of sins, committing these same types of mistakes as the Christian and as everybody else under the guise and premise that it's me, 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 and even though the devils are just coming inside of their life to 100% tempt all them, it's sad, honestly. And that's that's the state of this earth, and that's the state of mankind um, as a whole. Everyone on the face of this earth is operating on these same exact principles. Me, 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 and in reality, they're all being tempted and because they're all being tempted all of them are being manipulated to obviously further the devil's agenda uh, and because of that none of them ever reject any of the temptations that come inside of their life they just are like a hungry bird or a hungry whatever hungry anyone else everyone knows and anyone else with their mouth wide open and just taking everything in and eating everything up is honestly so sad that they're not actually able to realize that they could just easily reject those temptations that come inside of their life that has to deal with i mean these devils can't physically touch you they can't physically harm you as if you were in hell or as you know obviously there's rules and there's laws set up by god himself while they're walking here on the face of this earth they're only allowed to operate under that uh premise and the premise is temptation but if they're not actually able to tempt you to actually be able to harm you to actually be able to get somebody to run you over or somebody to crash their car inside of you or into you rather uh then obviously they're not actually able to use another person they're not actually able to come inside of your life to actually operate under that legality uh but because individuals either completely reject it completely reject this message and they continue believing that everything they hear and everything they think and everything they see has to deal with themselves and not temptations and then obviously they're going to take the bait every single time i mean now if you were actually able to look back inside of your life for you to actually be able to see all the times that you actually fell into sin for you to actually see the reality of the situation what actually ended up happening would you actually have ended up taking the bait how many individuals right now on the face of this earth do you think will continue living in this this type of mentality or in this type of way of thinking that they're depressed when in reality they obviously are being tempted a devil is whispering these types of ears knowing exactly that they're going to take the bait and knowing exactly the types of things that trigger these individuals to feel these types of emotions to actually be able to accept uh, everything and anything that these devils hear and the devil in the spirit of depression obviously is saying to them inside of their ears mimicking their voice whatever craft they're obviously using obviously they would just completely reject it and they'll be like i'm not I say, why are you doing this devil why are you doing this demon obviously these types of situations are realistically what is actually happening on the face of this earth everybody chooses to completely accept it or not do anything at all when obviously they should 100 percent reject uh those types of thoughts reject those types of beings coming as beings coming inside of their life uh, but obviously, in reality, they just reject the fact that they're just being tempted. Uh, anger is another one, another huge one. Sadness, 
uh, depression, anxiety, reject it immediately. If you submit yourselves to God and resist that devil of anxiety, it will 100% uh, flee from you. Um, schizophrenia, any, anything else that these devil, oh, wow, excuse me, that these devils obviously can convince you to actually believe uh, according to your own understanding and according to your own knowledge, sadly. To murder. I mean, but that's just the, the situation, sadly. Uh, but still, how many situations do you think you would actually have not fallen into? If you had just accepted the reality of the situation, what actually ended up happening. The temptations. I mean, I know I mentioned I have a child out of wedlock, right? I can't even imagine the type of philosophy that I would actually have. Uh, whatever, right? I can't even imagine the type of lifestyle I would have even have had after I would have realized, hearkened, really laid it to heart, and actually been able to practice it out to the point that I was able to prevent my son from actually being born. Uh, in this time, because these things are 100% true, if I would have rejected the temptation of getting, of because even the, the same day that I obviously got that girl pregnant, I even said these very words, I don't know, I just have a feeling I'm going to get you pregnant, if I would have just rejected uh, the temptation that came from fornicating uh, that same night, obviously, what do you think would have happened, my son wouldn't have been born, this, and that, I would have broken up with her, and that would have been done and over with. Uh, but obviously, I, I ended up yielding uh, to the devil, to the temptation. And now I have a son and a child out of wedlock. That's bad. Uh, so still, I'm losing more graces inside of your mind, your heart, your soul, your will, and your emotions. Mm. But that's just the fact of the matter, and you realistically need to apply that to what you need to apply it to. Whether it is you actually being able to let go of your old lifestyle, your old way of thinking, to be able to love your enemies, or you know what, to accept that you know what, maybe you're wrong, perhaps, maybe, you know, 100% chance you could be wrong in some situations, or, or not, right, or whatever else the case may be, or whatever other types of scenarios and types of... Uh, suffrages and oppressions that you're actually going through inside of your life that you actually need to apply those things to like lust, fornication, adultery, fear, cowardice, uh, doubt, anxiety. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everybody's just going through something uh, and going through some sort of suffrage either because of the sins of the fathers or either because of their own just ways of thinking in their own states of mind, sadly. And all that has to deal with you 100% being able to finally be uh, able to let go of your old way of thinking, thinking that you're obviously being punished for. In a re I'm sure that's actually what's happening. God is beating you repeatedly, hitting you over and over again, trying to get you to obviously let go of that way of thinking, uh, those tones of indifferences and everything else and you're just obviously not even bothering equating that's exactly what God is obviously doing to you and inside of your life and instead you keep asking for more and you're not actually being you're not actually able to accept more at the time that you're actually what is it uh, see he's beating me right now uh, you're not actually able to accept any more beatings or any more whippings uh, from your master uh, because he's obviously beating you too much. And still you keep asking for more and for more and for more when you need to obviously let it go. It's the exact same as uh, that type of picture and that type of image I've seen on Instagram of this individual who is actually holding on to this rope and is obviously cutting off the circulation from their hand. I mean, it looks all red. And obviously, you know, the more they're actually holding on to this rope, the more it's actually hurting them. And that's in short, exactly 
with what is happening to you. You 100% are holding on to this philosophy and this state of mind. And you're not actually willing to let it go. You're homeless. You're jobless. Uh, you're so, you, you don't have any of the gifts that you actually want. You can't heal. You can't cast the devil out. You can't speak in tongues. And me knowing how easy it is to be able to speak in tongues, I'm surprised that not everyone in the body of Christ is actually able to speak in tongues. That in itself is something that's mind-blowing to me. But obviously, you know, obviously I just wanted to mention that. But um, there's just so many different... Uh, types of situations that every single individual who wants to live righteously is actually going through in this current moment and all of them are not actually able to recognize why they're obviously and why they have so much pain inside of their life why they have so much suffrage inside of their life and it has to deal with that principle alone that you're not actually willing to let it go you don't want to let it go you're getting god infuriated because you want to call yourself a christian but you don't want to live righteously you want to do these things according to your own standard of sin and, and according to your own definitions of sin instead of god's definitions of sin obviously you already have confessed to an extent that you are living in sin and because you don't want to actually want to let any of those uh ways of thinking go um, because it's too much. It's just too much for you. It, because it's too much for you. You don't actually want to let go of any of those types of situations. That's what I was trying to say. Sadly, you're gonna have to count the cost and really recognize what's worth it to you. Burning in the lake of fire forever, or your pride. Your pride is not worth it at all. There's just been so many situations that's humbled me to be able to recognize and see that we're all equal on the face of this earth. Nobody is greater than the next person. And then for you to have this sense of worth higher than another individual or, you know, feeling more entitled than another person or even feeling more entitled than just a normal person and a normal man that like God can't do this to you. And God can't do this to you because of who you are as a person and what you have done for the kingdom of God. That's pride. It is just so sad. You bring in so many hardships and so many um, curses and hexes on your life and inside of your soul, inside of your mind, your heart, your soul, your will, and your emotions that is so difficult to save you and it's so difficult for you to actually be able to hear any of these types of messages and you just continue that you're you just continue walking as if you're perfectly fine when in reality you're perfectly damned and you're going straight into the lake of fire let it go 100 percent uh, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit what else he wants to say. Uh, the spiritual warfare in itself, obviously, hopefully you're able to see the value of it now uh, at this point. is going to be able to help you and amplify your uh, abilities of being a disciple of Christ. And your capabilities of being a disciple of Christ. Because you need to be capable of actually hearkening to all of Christ's commandments to actually be able to practice these things out inside of your life or you're never going to be able to do it. In all honesty, you want to continue doing these things in your own way, feeding, the, reading the same old messages over and over again and the same types of verses, wondering why you're still going through the same types of suffrages and it's because you're not doing a spiritual thing. You're not breaking any of these curses. You're not breaking any of these hexes through the cross. You're not doing any of these things. And so you continue doing these things in a carnal manner when there's a spiritual problem. So hopefully you're actually able to see uh, why you're going through so many suffrages and what the issues and what the problems actually are. It's, it's your whole, whole philosophy. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Mm, it's your whole philosophy. It's your whole way of living. It's your whole outlook. Even for something as spiritual as the gospel itself, that you actually get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're not actually able to equate that these spiritual problems require spiritual solutions. But now nah, you just continue doing everything according to your own old ways of thinking. And 
you never get any better, sadly. Everything is just one big meat fest, one big carnal fest for you. And in reality, all of these things are spiritual in themselves. Too much milk and too much, too much carnal solutions. Big issues for anyone who wants to call themselves, call themselves Christians. I'm going to ask Christ what he wants to say. Don't get stressed out. Don't get overwhelmed by any of these types of messages and any of these types of goals that you have in mind that I actually have mentioned in this video. All these things are obviously going to come with time, but you're still going to have to do these things according to Christ's pace and not on your own pace, sadly. Too many people want to do these things at their own pace. Too many individuals don't see the issues uh, and the problems of actually doing things at their own pace when obviously Christ himself is a king, correct? You obviously need to work according to his own standards and according to his own pace. He's not going to tell you to do these things at your own time, at your own convenience. He's obviously going to tell you to do these things now and right away. Correct? Correct. But still, there's hope for many of you individuals who obviously want to get better. You just have to be willing to try it out and have to be willing to actually be able to do these types of works. Or you're going to starve yourself short. You have to obviously not motivate yourselves or encourage yourselves. But you obviously have to have a good mindset and a good outlook. And tell yourselves that I can do this. Uh, I can be Christ's perfect little Christian. And, and more. Well. Amen. Yeses and noes. That's your whole life. So now, obviously, the little homework that I have for you in this video, in this last bit, is for you to actually be able to just think of all the times, all your mistakes where you actually said yes to, and all the times that you actually said no to um, obedience to Christ. All the times you said yes to obedience to Christ, and all the times that you said no uh, to sin. And then really start reflecting these things on a on a bigger level and on an atomic level. Uh, to pray, excuse me, in all honesty, to actually be able to see sin according to how Christ actually views sin. And to finally be able to be bold and courageous. Many individuals are just way too scared to even pray that little prayer to Christ because they know that there's going that there's going to expose so much sin, so much iniquity inside of their lives, and they don't know if they're actually going to be able to let go of any of those things, and, and oh wow, and any of those sins that Christ Himself is going to reveal to them is sad, and because of that, they'll never bother asking, they'll never bother. Um, Viewing sin according to how Christ actually views sin. And Christ 100% cuts them off because of it. Mm, that's this fact of the matter. And these individuals still continue believing naively that Christ hasn't cut them off. When in reality they rejected the gospel and they rejected Jesus Christ himself and who Jesus Christ really is. And they just continue living and working out these works of iniquity and because they're ignorant of it and because they didn't bother asking, they think everything is fine because they don't actually everything oh well, excuse me. They think everything is fine because they don't actually know. Amen. Thank you for listening. Bless God. Love God. Thank God. Be grateful for this message. Be grateful for all of these messages and all of these virtues and all of these graces to actually be able to uh, to hear what Christ wants them to hear. What Christ wants you to hear. Correct? Of course.
course, every day is a good day to be thankful. Every day is just a great day, in all honesty. I love being thankful for all these things that have been said in my life. It's not going to get you a Ferrari, but it definitely is a good attitude to have while you're walking here on the face of this earth. To still be thankful with the little that you actually have, as it could always be worse. Amen. Thank you. Good night.